My name is Bo Hyun Lee. I am a third year graduate student. I will introduce our recent study on proton block of proton activated triple one current. This work was conducted in the Zhang Laboratory at UC Davis School of Medicine. Nociceptive and inflammatory pain result from activation of nociceptors. One of the nociceptors, TRIP1, is activated by noxious stimuli such as thermal or chemical stimuli. When our body has tissue injury, inflammatory mediators such as proton is released and activate TRIP1. Both noxious stimuli and inflammatory mediators can directly activate TRIP1 and induce pain through spinal cord. Therefore, proton is a common regulator for both nociceptive and inflammatory pains and TRIP1 serves as a common nociceptor. TRIP1 is a well-known heat and capsaicin receptor. It is a tetramer with the ion permeation pore in the middle. Various cations move through the pore. This is the topology plot of one TRIP1 subunit which has six transmembrane segments. TRIP1 is a polymoral nociceptor. Capsaicin binding site is near the intracellular site. TRIP1 starts to open when the temperature rises to around 40 degrees Celsius. Voltage applied across the cell membrane can strongly influence channel activity. Spider and centipede toxins, divalent cations activate the channel from the extracellular side. Extracellular proton also potentially activate TRIP1. However, in the body core, temperature is stable and capsaicin and toxins are normally absent. Therefore, proton is the most important endogenous ligand. How proton interacts with TRIP1, however, remains mostly unclear. Proton can bind to many candidate residues on the extracellular side of the channel. Two glutamic acid have been suggested as important site for proton-induced activation. Proton binding on other two sites is proposed to inhibit ion permeation. There are additional acidic residues which can be candidate binding sites of proton. Besides, it is known that point mutations at non titratable residues can prevent proton induced TRIP1 activation. Our study focused on understanding the molecular mechanism of proton TRIP1 interaction. We conducted outside out pitch clamp recording using mouse TRIP1 express human embryonic kidney 293 cells. These are the traces that show steady state current during the exposure to solutions of different pH containing capsaicin and transient increase of the current to, to withdrawal of acidic solution. The pH of basal solution is 7.2 and this solution does not contain capsaicin. First, we used solutions containing a low concentration of capsaicin to mimic the situation of a resting neuron. Increase of proton concentration induced currents of increasing amplitude. However, as the proton concentration kept increasing, the stable current started to decrease. We also used a high concentration of capsaicin to mimic an excited neuron. Under these conditions, we observed very different responses of TRIP1 to proton. With high concentration of capsaicin, TRIP1 channels were already activated. Applying proton-containing solutions caused the steady-state current to gradually decrease. And then this current could reach the maximum level after removal of the acidic solution. Upon removal of proton-containing solutions, we observed a transient increase in current amplitude, which we call the of response. Clearly, TRIP1 responses to proton differently under different cellular conditions. To better understand the transient of response, we built a rapid solution switching system. By moving a theta glass pipette back and forth in front of the membrane patch, the perfused solutions could be switched in less than one millisecond. With this method, we could reliably measure the whole time course of trip ion response by proton. We found that with a pH 4.5 solution, the channel started to activate and reached plateau. Upon removal of acidic solution, there was a rapid increase of current. This is the off-response and it decayed slowly back to the ground level. With the off-response, we could measure two current amplitudes. 
I1 is total current and I2 is rising phase of response current. Using the rapid solution exchange method, we observed that the pH dependent of response increased with lower pH solutions. However, I1 and I2 have different pH dependence. I1 showed a higher apparent proton binding affinity and sensitivity, while I2 showed a much lower apparent affinity and sensitivity for proton. Therefore, the of response revealed that proton induced two distinct processes in tree one A possibility for the two processes can be represented by this scheme, in which proton affects both activation gating and ion permeation. The first proton binding step produces the gating effect. Once the channel is activated, the open channel current is instantly reduced by proton inhibition of permeation. Removal of proton quickly relieves inhibition of permeation, followed by slow deactivation gating. The combination of these two steps could produce a transient of response. We conducted single-channel recordings to confirm that proton has the two distinct processes. We saw that proton increased the mean open time, which is consistent with activation gating. Proton also reduced conductance in a concentration-dependent manner. Therefore, we could confirm that proton clearly has two distinct processes on tree one To better understand the permeation effect of proton, the up response of tree one was recorded at various voltages. There was an up response at all the voltages from minus 80 to plus 100 millivolt. The percentage of inhibition, however, was different decreasing as the voltage became more positive. This voltage-dependent inhibition suggested that the proton binding site or sites are within the membrane electric field. When the percentage of inhibition was plotted against the voltages and fitted to Boltzmann function, we obtained the apparent charge associated with proton inhibition. The estimated value 0.48 elementary charge indicate that proton moves almost halfway into the transmembrane electric field. We also measured proton inhibition of capsaicin activated trifluon current. We first applied saturating concentration of capsaicin to achieve maximum activation of the channel and then gradually reduced the pH level. Capsaicin induced currents were inhibited by proton. Interestingly, proton inhibition was much more prominent in the inward current measured at minus 80 mV than in the outward current measured at plus 80 mV. This result confirmed that proton inhibition is a voltage-dependent process. It was previously proposed that these two residues mediate proton's permeation effect. We used metagenesis to test whether these residues participate in proton trifluon interaction. Titratable residues were changed to non titratable residues to mimic the protonated state. E637 is located on prohalix, proton inhibited capsaicin induced currents from the mutant. D647 is adjacent to the selectivity filter. Proton also inhibited capsaicin-induced currents from the mutant. Even double mutant did not prevent proton inhibition. These mutants are all sensitive to proton inhibition, suggesting that proton binds to another site or sites to produce inhibition. In summary, we showed that extracellular proton activate through free one, but also reduce ion permeation. The combination of these two effects produced off response which could be reliably recorded and analyzed using the rapid solution exchange method. This allowed us to separate gating and permeation effects of proton. With this method, we first focused on permeation effect by proton. Proton inhibition is voltage dependent, likely by moving halfway into the transmembrane electric field to reach its binding site or site. Mutations of the two proposed proton binding sites did not prevent proton inhibition, indicating that another binding site or sites are involved in proton-induced inhibition of ion permeation. Our study leads to a number of open questions regarding proton trifluon interaction. For example, where does proton binds to inhibit ion permeation? 
There are many exceeded residues at the outer pore region. What are the roles of this site for gating and or permeation effects? Answering these questions requires future experiments. The experimental method established in the present study allowed us to reliably separate gating and permeation effects. So in the future, we can study how proton activate refill to produce pain.